This adorable cabinet has a surprise on the inside. We're gonna be highlighting the details with glaze today and doing something extra special to cover up the scratch tap formica on the inside. I've never tried to make formica look like wood before. To do that, I'm gonna be using Reticket Liquid Wood. Can't wait to share all the ins and outs and what I think about it. The first thing I'm gonna do is to remove the drop-down door and all these hinges that are on top of the Formica material. As you may already know, one of the reasons why Formica is very popular for any cocktail cabinet, it's because the material holds up to scratches, dings, and cuts. But obviously, this little lady has been well-loved and now it's needing a makeover. As I'm refinishing the outside of it, I can't neglect the inside. In fact, I'm gonna start today's transformation from the inside out. The front drawer is tight and making a lot of noise, so we're gonna be addressing that. I'm gonna start by removing any grease and grime that has accumulated over time with my simple green degreaser. In case you're wondering, formica is prepped the same way as I would prep wood before refinishing. Avoid breathing any of the dust that's flying around from you sanding by wearing a mask or a respirator. Initially, I considered buying a new piece of laminate, but it was a little bit more expensive than what I'm gonna do, and I was gonna have extra material that I'm not planning on using anytime soon. So instead, I opted to try this liquid wood coating called Reticket. It contains 65% recycled wood fibers. I'll be talking more about this product in a minute. For now, let's make sure that this drawer slides nice and smooth. I like using a sheet of paper, opening and closing the drawer to see where it wrinkles. That usually tells me where the drawer is tight and it's not on top. Sometimes if you sand the bottom and make sure that the nails are all the way in, that does the trick. I took a poll over on Instagram to have my friends vote for either a dark green or a lighter green. Most of them voted for a light color green. That was my first option, but as you can tell, the inside of the cabinet has a very dark espresso color. I wanted the cabinet to look a little more cohesive. There are also two inserts that go inside the cabinet, one to the right, one to the left, to hold cups. These inserts can slide in and out, and I could tell that if I painted the inside, including the inserts, with time, the paint would cheap off. That's why I decided just to paint the outside a darker color so I didn't have to change a lot of the inside. By the way, this piece is being entered for the Ugly Duckling Challenge hosted by my friend Corey at Desert DIY. So after you're done watching, be sure to check out the rest of the videos in the playlist down below. As I was sanding and cleaning, I noticed that there were a couple of cracks across the drawer and also a piece of veneer had chipped off from the top. To cover up those imperfections, I'm gonna be using a natural color wood filler. Since the repairs are quite shallow, I'm gonna wait half hour and then I'm gonna sand those repairs. On the midtime, I'm gonna start applying this bonding primer to the Formica. When I go to the Reticus website, it doesn't say anywhere that you need to prime. But to me, it just feels like the right thing to do if I want what I'm gonna be brushing on top of it to stick really well. This liquid wood can be purchased in different colors. I ordered the light color one. There are sets that you can buy that are already come with a brush and a stain. I ended up reaching out to Reticket's owner and she recommended that you use the three times faster oil-based stain from Barathane and to stay away from any penetrating stains. The reason being is because penetrating stains are designed to infiltrate a thick piece of wood and this is only a very thin layer and that's why we need something that dries faster and doesn't have to go as deep. I want the grain to really stand out, but I didn't order another color of Reticket, so I ended up adding just a little bit of this chocolate color paint and mixed it to make a darker tone. Just know that this is optional. Many people just brush in Reticket and then stain over it. 
Here you can see the contrast between the color that I created versus the one I bought. You really only need to brush a thin layer of the darker tone. Now I'm gonna take my wood graining tool and doing a rocking back and forth motion as I'm gliding it across. It's always a good idea to keep a rag handy so that you can offload any product that accumulates on your graining tool. For some reason, my gliding wasn't very even and ended up missing this section here. So I just went over it with my graining tool and it worked. It is recommended that you work on smaller sections at the time, especially if you're working on a large surface to ensure that the product doesn't start drying out before you start gliding your tool across. I found this product to be really easy to work with. In fact, here in a minute, you're gonna see how something in the wood graining looks off. I didn't like it, so what I did is just, I rebrushed some of the reticket and then glided my graining tool again until it looked good to my eyes. I was also surprised to know that even though this is a water-based product, you only need to wait two hours for it to dry before applying the oil-based stain. Just showing you a quick close-up of how it's looking. Honestly, I'm super impressed. It's not even stained yet, but it really looks like wood grain. My workshop is 50 degrees today, so I know it's gonna take way longer than two hours for the reticket to dry. That's why I'm just going to cover it all up and apply two coats of clear shellac base primer. Staining will have to wait until tomorrow. The primer is going to prevent any wood tannings from seeping through your new finish. I'm going to be waiting one hour after I'm done applying my last coat of primer before I start scuff sanding and removing all the sheen. That way my paint can stick. Then I'm going to be one last wipe down away before I can start applying my paint. For my base color, I loaded my Detail Finish Nassel Flexio 3500 with a beautiful color called Yosemite from Lily Moon Paint. I ended up applying a total of three coats for full coverage. Since my goal is to match the sections that I apply reticket to the inside of the cabinet, I'm applying this color Kona from Barathane. Uh, I made a mistake of over wiping and at the end this section looked a little too light so after this first coat dry I ended up doing a second coat. But for the other section that's inside the cabinet, I really made sure not to overwipe, so only one application of this dark stain was needed. I 
I actually waited 36 hours before putting the cabinet together here and loaded my Flexio 3500 from Wagner again, but this time using high performance top coat from General Finishes. I was applying that first coat and I just felt the need to glaze this piece. There were too many beautiful details to miss on the opportunity to highlight them. So after a couple of hours, once my top coat was dry, I used peach black glaze effect from General Finishes. First, I missed the surface. You really don't need a lot of glaze here. A little bit goes a long ways. General Finishes has a product called Extender. And just like the name tells you, it extends the work time that you have with the glaze. Since I didn't add the extender because I don't have any, the fact that I missed the surface before applying the glaze is gonna give me a larger time to play with it. Not as much as the extender would have, still more than I would have if I hadn't missed my surface. If you want your application to be even more subtle to what I'm doing here today, I would recommend that you whiten the rag that you're using to wipe off the glaze. There was also a section where my glaze looked a little too heavy. What I did to correct that was grabbing a 600 grit sanding sheet and sanded that section alone very lightly until they match the rest of my piece. The glaze will dry within two to four hours and after you can top coat your piece to protect it. I apply three more coats of general finishes high performance. And before I share the final results, let's remember where we started today. And this is how this adorable piece looks today. Did you like the glazing part better or the reticket part better? Let me know in the comments. I will see you guys next time.